This is The Elegant Oxford with your host, Preston Soto. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you all had a fantastic holiday season and a very happy new year. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to remove mold and mildew from a vintage 90s era pair of USA made Cole Hans. Uh, now don't ask me how all this happened, it's kind of embarrassing. I left the shoes outside in a bucket and it rained and there was water and uh, got some mold on the shoes. So if this ever happens to you, hopefully this video will help and you can learn how to get the shoes looking better than you. Now before I begin, I'd like to discuss how I use the word vintage when discussing shoes. I've gotten some comments stating that nothing made in the 90s can be considered vintage and that the term vintage should only be used when discussing shoes or items from the 60s, 70s, and possibly early 80s. I think there is some merit in this idea, since it is true that some things made in the 90s are not considered vintage, such as 90s era Ford Mustangs that you might see driving around town on any given day. That being said, however, there are many items from the 90s that are definitely considered vintage. Among them are shoes and toys, especially if they aren't opened or new. Certain collectibles from as late as 1998 have achieved vintage status, uh, but in the shoe world this is especially true if the company went out of business, like Hanover, or if the company moved production overseas, leading to a drastic change in quality and design like Johnson & Murphy. A US-made pair of early 90s era Johnson & Murphys are considered vintage and fetch a high price. <laughs> so uh, a 90s era Toyota Camry, not vintage. Uh, certain 90s pairs of dress shoes, definitely vintage. So uh, the pair was actually, actually when I uh, got inside, I actually found a, a little Black Widow spider that had died and that was inside the shoe and kind of freaked me out. So in San Diego, we don't have any big spiders. We have Black Widows rarely, uh, but nothing seriously big. So this was kind of funny. Um, she goes to show how long those shoes were outside. So I dusted them off and made sure everything inside was out. There was a dead bee that had been, uh, I guess, had was being eaten by the Black Widow. It was covered in silk and some other little bugs in there. So I got those out. I started brushing the shoe with a horsehair brush just to get whatever dust and, and, and uh, whatever I could get off. And there were some spores flying out of the shoe from the mildew. And I wore a little mask just to make sure I didn't breathe that stuff in. Um, but... Uh, all in all, apart from the smell and the mildew, the shoes look like they were in great shape. Um, they are bookbinder leather, um, but that's expected from something in the 90s. Uh, but that's okay, I think we can go ahead and, and clean them out. I used a, a, a small brush uh, just to get out and get in there and get all the nasty stuff out. There was some stuff in the crevices and I wanted to make sure it was all cleaned out. Oh, and before I forget, um, there's no audio for this part of the video because my microphone keeps picking up radio signals sometimes, so you can hear music in the background, and some people have commented on that. Um, and it's loud enough so that you can actually make out the song, and I just didn't want to deal with it, and some people complain. So there's no audio for this portion. Um, I started using saddle soap, and saddle soap is really great because it removes... Um, a lot of old polish and grime off of the shoe. Now, if you're not careful and the shoe is new, you can actually end up removing some of the factory finish. So uh, be, be judicious with your saddle soap. And in this case, it's, it's required because the mold and the mildew is, is uh, all over the place. But I was surprised how, how well the saddle soap did at removing it. Now, you can find saddle soap wherever you'd like. You can even go to Walmart and get some. Um, this saddle soap I'm using is by Avell, and it's really great stuff. I really enjoy using it uh, when needed.
Okay, now the insides of the shoe were absolutely bad. <laughs> Pretty terrible. I, I wish I could really get the camera in there so you could see, but it was really dirty and there was mold inside like you would not believe. So at this point in the video, I hadn't realized or I hadn't figured out that uh, saddle soap was not going to be enough. Um, but I just went in there and cleaned up as much as I could to make sure that there was not as much mold. And the saddle soap did get off a lot of mold, but I definitely needed something stronger than saddle soap. Okay, now here I upgraded to uh, Clorox bleach tile cleaner general purpose. <laughs> it's really strong stuff. And I just put it in there and sprayed it on and used a little brush. And I went in there and really went to town. This section, I didn't record all of it, but it took me about an hour of just scrubbing and cleaning and making sure everything inside was completely eliminated and killed before I, I began or went any further. So mold can be kind of hard to kill. But when you introduce strong cleaners like bleach, um, it, it dies pretty quickly. So I sprayed a lot of it inside and I made sure to eliminate all of that bad stuff. Now, if you're a little apprehensive about using harsher chemicals, you can use baking soda and uh, vinegar. It might take you a little bit longer, but it'll definitely work. And it's more natural, probably smells better. <laughs> but uh, you can do that as well. So, uh, or, or leave, in, leave a comment down below if you know of something else that can kill mold uh, effectively. Um, I don't know everything, and I'm just doing the best I can with what I have. Now, at this point, the shoes were absolutely soaked, so I got my wife's famous hair dryer, and I put them inside the shoe and uh, dried them out. This, this actually took a long time, so I, I made sure to use the hair dryer and to put it up at the highest heat I could, and then I stuck them in front of a heater, a little small portable uh, space heater, just to dry them up for about an hour, and then I left them outside for a day. Now, the next day, they were ready to be cleaned, so I used a cedar shoe tree, and these were new just to make sure any excess moisture was pulled out. But the shoes were really, really dry. And I used a brush, a pig bristle brush, and it's pretty stiff just to get off anything else that was left behind, maybe some soap scum. And then since these are bookbinder, uh, the Saphir Renovateur is gonna be used just to clean the, the top layer. Because as many of you know, bookbinder is non-porous, so it's not gonna be absorbed into the calf. So this is just more as a cleaner to get all the, the excess soap scum and uh, the, the soap residue and just to make sure the shoe is really clean and ready for polish. Okay, now fancy me. Here's my Mongolian yak hairbrush that I got from Kirby Allison at the Hanger Project and it's really cool actually. Um, it's really thick but it's also really soft so it's great for um, good shines and since this pair needed just a uh, good brushing um, I, I decided to use this brush. It doesn't really streak at all, which is one of my favorite things. It's good for finishing off um, that final shine. So uh, overall, I really like it. Um, it. It's really cool, and I like telling people it's Mongolian yak hair. I think it's, <laughs> it sounds really cool. Now the shoes didn't really need cream polish or anything, so uh, I'm gonna mirror shine them. Now you can mirror shine bookbinder corrected grain calf. Um, the leather uh, won't absorb anything, but it'll definitely uh, shine. 
So here I am, I'm going to take a little bit of wax and I'm going to do a mirror shine so you can see the final result. If you need help learning how to mirror shine, I have plenty of other videos um, with the whole process. It takes about an hour or two, um, so you have to be really patient, but in the end I think it looks fantastic. Okay, so here is the before, and here is the after. I'm pretty happy with how they came out. Remember, if you ever run into mold or mildew, use saddle soap and a stronger cleaner. Uh, you know, Clorox uh, disinfecting spray or tile cleaner works really well. It worked great for me. The shoes are completely free of mold and mildew, and they are ready to go. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook at The Elegant Oxford. Links to my pages are in the description of this video. Remember, always put your best foot forward. The small details matter most, so don't forget to hashtag shine your shoes. See you next time.